of BitMEX, Stefan Lutz. Stefan, how are you? Yeah, uh, hi Greg, I'm fine, thank you. And thanks for the invitation, uh, happy to speak to you. Yeah, me too, this is really exciting. So I was thinking for you know listeners who want to get a little bit to know you a little bit, can you talk about your background before becoming the CEO of BitMEX? Uh, of course. Uh, I mean, I'm a, for, for the pure crypto guys, I guess I'm a special animal. For the ones where I come from, I'm a special animal too. So <laughs> a little bit of background, it was quite a journey, frankly. So if you just look at the, at the official CV, yes, you see me joining the stage basically 2021 when joining BitMEX. But I have been, I have been active personally on personal level in the in the DLT space I'd rather call it a DLT space since 2012 so I was very interested in the technology wanted to to know more about it use cases how it works it's a whole governance thing so I was pretty excited about it mm. but frankly I never did it professionally I only did it for myself so professionally I started my career at Dresdner Bank, a large German bank at that time, so I'm a pretty old guy, in equities trading and corporate finance, moved on to a shipping company, became CFO there. I mean, it was called slightly different, but I was a CFO, and we scaled heavily, so a lot of funding uh, went around at this, this time. It was the height of the shipping frenzy, so sometimes the shipping industry at that time reminds me of crypto a little mm. bit. <laughs> slightly different in terms of technology, but, but a little bit the same in terms of energy and what's going on. After that, moved on to Deutsche Börse, served, uh, which is uh, Europe's largest stock exchange operator and running the uh, futures exchange, Eurex, for, for the guys out of uh, classical financial services. Uh, served there as a senior vice president for corporate M&A, and later on, I took over some operations for Germany and Europe. Uh, and then I moved on to PwC, where I was the head of the capital market sector, so mm. advising some of the largest uh, financial institutions around the globe and setting up their capital markets, especially back offices and and support functions. So I know pretty well how the how the system works uh, or the systems work. And and frankly, this is uh, where I always got excited about uh, distributed ledger technology, blockchain, and crypto as well, because you can do a lot of things much better than they do. Uh, I advised as well central banks around the globe, like uh, in Malaysia and Indonesia, the European oh, wow. Central Bank, uh, Mercosur Central Banks on capital markets development and financial stability matters. And here it culminates a little bit, like my interest for crypto and distributed ledger technology and seeing what's going on in the financial space. And when then BitMEX asked me basically end of 2020 whether I would uh, consider joining BitMEX in their journey, I was like, wow, that's that's like winning the lottery. I, I finally can apply my professional skills to a field of expertise that I've built up personally and I'm excited and interested about. So frankly, it took me, I think, like like one week or so to just say, yeah, okay, I, 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 I joined no matter what. I, I want to be there. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So and originally you joined on as the CFO and then late, later transitioned to the CEO. Now, I definitely want to ask about maybe some differences day to day between the two roles. But one of the things that's really interesting about your background is that it's a, it's a really serious background in terms of you know financial education. You know how to read a balance sheet. People can trust that you have the funds that you say you have. And so that, that, that brings a lot of uh, confidence in the space, especially post FTX scandal. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But maybe you could just touch on what's the difference between being the CFO at BitMEX and being the CEO at BitMEX? Yeah, in, in, in a way, it was a it felt like a natural evolution on, on one hand, because let me let me just briefly and very honestly here as well, um, take you through the journey of the last year. I mean, it's approaching well, two and a half, three years now. Um, actually, I joined BitMEX for well, a couple of reasons, but two main tasks. One was to help in um, becoming compliant and making sure mm -hmm. that what we do is safe, sound, which it actually was all the time, which was funny. So so the, the outside picture is a little bit different to what we see internally. So but to make sure that everyone knows and that we can be proud about that and that we can fulfill all the requirements that are necessary to operate in the legal and legit space. And the second one was uh, actually the plan was to grow heavily, to scale heavily and provide the financial infrastructure for that. So building a, let's say, real finance team. There wasn't a real finance team, so don't get me wrong, but, mm. but scaling that up quite significantly. 
Um, then in 2022, and then the FTX meltdown, markets changed quite dramatically, and we went back uh, strategically to focus on our core strength. And I guess we talk about that in a minute as well. And with that strategic pivot, um, there was a little bit of the question, how do we do that in the best way? And in the end, I just have been lucky that, that the founders trusted me out of the management team and said, hey, we trust you, uh, please um, execute on that additional change or change again, please, and make sure that it works. So so there is a natural evolution in terms of how it came. Um, the other one is, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a, I would say, slightly different job. Uh, yes, I still look at finances at, at, and I still want to make sure that everything's there and that the control works in, in, in the best possible way. But frankly, the, the main task is to make sure that this strategic pivot back to our professional traders, um, at, I call it a fan base, and, and, and to a very bespoke set of traders and catering for the institutional space in our world um, um, so, so, so that we fulfill those perceived requirements it's always a little wording thing so we look at different stuff so to give you an, 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 an example like three years ago we wanted to go full scale spot business coin based finance line mm. right so mass adoption of crypto new traders coming to the to the, to the world of crypto we basically i wouldn't say scrap that but we said this is third priority now let's focus on our derivatives business our core strength let's focus on our heavy traders that really bring the volume and that bring uh in the end the revenues that pay the salaries and make sure that we provide a a a product that's not reliant just on scaling sometime in the future but that is profitable right now mm. um and with that a lot of client discussions discussions with partners affiliates right so so making the books right and my, my colleagues will hate me for that counting the beans <laughs> now it's more like okay how can we win new partners what are the client bases we need to cater for how can we improve um we call it user experience it's not just your screen that you open up with what's running in the background so um, uh, aligning tech teams with the business development teams, making sure they talk to each other on a regular level, making sure our customer support stays best in class. I mean, we, we get very good grades still for reacting. Uh, I mean, if, if you call up, most of the tickets are closed within an hour, mm. uh, stuff like that. that we are approachable, right, as persons, which actually turns our perceived weakness like having only um, let's say a couple of 10,000 active traders on the platform and not millions like some of our competitors, but turning that into a, 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 an advantage because we can speak to our clients and we want to do that even much more. And having that change, initiating it and, and pushing it through is really now my day-to-day -day focus compared to making the numbers correct, right? I mean, I, I'm lucky that I've got a good finance team in the background, so I did my job before so I could change. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. And speaking about sort of your core business, I mean, BitMEX is really known for the perpetual contract. Um, I think you guys launched that in 2016. Were you guys the first one to launch a, a perpetual contract in the space? Actually, actually, Arthur, Ben, and Sam. So, our the, the credits to our founders. So, so our founders and their very small team at that time, they came up with that idea of the perpetual swaps, and and but it wasn't the only one. I I would I would say um, very very um, consciously that they basically built the open source infrastructure of the whole crypto derivative space mm. nowadays. Because what did they do? They invented the perpetual swap, which basically often it's misunderstood. It's an interesting combination. It's actually a derivatives contract without an exp expiry date mm -hmm. that allows you to enter into, at that time, Bitcoin exposure, nowadays much more than this, um, at lower exposure. And that's that's the beauty of it. So you just need to post the margin that is expected to fluctuate with the market price movements. So if you want to be one Bitcoin long, you don't need to have as nowadays 26,000 US dollars, mm -hmm. you need to have maybe, I mean, don't don't get me wrong, I, I, I don't have the calculator open here, it depends on the leverage you take, but only a couple of hundred US dollars equivalent in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So you, you save a lot of money, that means it's a very capital efficient way of trading. And that has been copied all over. Everyone uses perpetual swaps right now, but there were more innovations that needed to come together. Second one was actually, a, a at that time proprietary bitcoin wallet. it was very much about bitcoin bitcoin wallet 
um, that is safe and secure and that that technically, I mean, I know people need to believe it. I mean, they can't look into our code, but that, that can't be tampered uh, uh, around with. Uh, and that has a quite uh, basically it's a 100% cold wallet storage. So so um, and that was built out of the experiences with Mount Gox at that time. So basically, our founders wanted to trade crypto. That's where they came from, but they were annoyed with the scams out there in the market and especially Mount Gox. So they built something that, from their point of view, would prevent something like a Mount Gox, so that people vanish with your funds all of a sudden. That this this would be technically impossible. So, so, so this was the second one. It was the wallet, and then the third one, which for me actually is a beauty and never has been really explored. I mean, I come from classical financial services. That's why I'm excited about that. Is the um, at that time eight hours funding mechanism? Mm -hmm. What does it mean? I mean, that means if I trade with you and I don't know you on the platform, and we have a permissionless platform, so everyone can become part of that. But we trade peer to peer. I have an open. And we come to that, I think, in, in a moment when we talk about liquidations and stuff. And I trade with you. Let's say you win, I lose. I need to pay you because I need to get margin over to your account. I'm, I'm, the exchange does it. If we don't know each other, this is an open counterparty credit risk. You don't know my financial strength, not at all. You have no guarantees that I could do a margin call later on, like in the classical space. So. They said, let's reduce this counterparty risk and settle those main, uh, this variation margin changes every eight hours. Mm -hmm. So instead of having open counterparty credit risk, like in financial services overnight or over a couple of days until everything has been sorted out, you basically have eight hours. That reduces it a lot. And we, got, we have gone further than this, basically. Nowadays, you can opt in for something that's called instant PL realization. So you get it every 10 minutes. Mm. So, so really going for that peer to peer idea. And those three things together, the perpetual swap, the uh, wallet together with the funding, with those funding mechanisms that really did a trick to, to, to drive adoption of crypto derivatives trading in the space at that time, because it was safe, it was secure. And in a way it was trustworthy. Um, and, and that just took off. And then the whole industry, actually every every player out there, every legit player out there has the same, I call it micro, microstructure. Mm -hmm. They operate perpetual swap. They usually operate, okay, on the, on the custodial piece, it's a little bit different. And we have a lot of moving angles in the industry right now. But even the funding mechanism was copied by all of them. So, so, so in, in a way, that was the open source um, infrastructure like the Linux system uh, for the crypto derivatives industry. So, and we're still operating on that. <laughs> yeah, that's fascinating. And, and kudos to the founders as well. And one of those founders, yeah. Arthur Hayes, who is someone I like a lot and has a really good blog that he, he posts uh, quite often. Uh, is he still involved at all with BitMEX? Well, I mean, he's still owner or co-owner of BitMEX. Uh, he's not involved in day-to-day -day management. Uh, he's got other and, and personal projects he takes care of. Mm. He's still very much, I'd say, connected to us. So, and, and we always look forward to his new blog that we publish as well on our blog. Um, and, 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 and he's, he, I mean, it, it's still his company, but he's not involved in day-to-day -day management. Yes, we speak in regular meetings with each other. We discuss um, kind of ideas for product innovations, but on an irregular basis, right? So as a no day-to-day -day management, he's, 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 he's gone back to being owner, co-owner, uh, and board member. Day-to-day um, -day management is run by, by, let's call it a, yeah, I, 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 I save the word, but by a management team that hopefully is capable of that. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> absolutely. And so, one of the things you just mentioned before was sort of the technology behind uh, your guys' wallets. Uh, after the FTX scandal, you know, a lot of exchanges did proof of reserves. Nick Carter, who's like a big, well-respected personality in the crypto space, uh, ranked a lot of these proof of reserves for all the various exchanges. BitMEX got top marks. Uh, I think they were number one uh, as far as uh, sort of in yeah. Nick Carter's eyes, yeah. uh, the most secure and the most legit. Maybe you could just talk about sort of that, you know, what do you guys do for that transparency to get those marks? And also during the FTX scandal, like how did that affect you? Uh, you know, was it crazy over at Bit BitMEX? How were customers reacting? How, how was that? Yeah. Um, um, okay. Where does, okay. Let, let's start with proof of reserves, proof of liabilities. The, mm -hmm. for me really, it's not funny, but, but in a, in a way funny personally thing is, um, we had that already in 2021. 
Mm. So we thought about proof of reserves, proof of liabilities pretty early on because it's, and I come back to that hopefully in a couple of seconds, because it's in the DNA um, 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 of, of the company in a way. I mean, not proof of reserves as a tool. I mean, this company was never found to be founded to, to have proof of reserves, but the idea of it was, was pretty much in the DNA of the company. But at that time, no one cared. I mean, you still find it on our blog. If you, if you just scroll down enough, you see it that 20, I think it was 2021. It was like, hey, here's some proof of reserve stuff uh, for everyone who wants to have it. Here's it. We, we published it on GitHub, um, basically, again, as an open source uh, code and so on and so on. But no one cared. And then when FTX happened, that was basically the perfect event to say, hey, let's, let's, let's dig that out again and, and make something something out of it. So we went again, proof of reserves, proof of liabilities. I think we are the only ones who do that twice a week because the idea is that people who rerun the proof of reserves, proof of liabilities on their own can build up a time series, mm. right? The funny thing about proof of reserves is, um, and, and, and Nick Carter is great. I mean, he, he really understands it, um, is if you provide a snapshot one, once every three months, so once a quarter, it basically tells you nothing because you can make the books work. You just mm. transfer something onto the wallets. You show, not, I mean, you don't show the balances, right? But you show it non-technically spoken, a nice balance. Next day, you transfer it out again. Mm. Interesting. Cool thing, right? But if you do that, I mean, monthly is already better. Um, we, we even thought about doing it daily. And the only reason for not doing it daily is a very technical one. We need to store all the data. And it's quite cumbersome because we want to to have this this publicly available. And I think this is the main difference. It's not that we do a proof of reserves than having a auditor statement. And frankly, an auditor statement is a statement, not more than this. I worked in this space before. Not 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 no disrespect to the people, but if you if you know how 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 that works, it's like yeah, it's nice that someone else has a look over it, but it's better to redo proof of reserves on your own. So, so it's, it's already better on a monthly basis. So daily would be the best one because not because of the proof of reserves, proof of liabilities concept as such, as said, you can do it at any snapshot, any, any, any point in time. Mm -hmm. But if you have many points in time, you can build your own uh, time series and you see the changes overall in the wallets. Is, is there something going on? Um, like looking at it real time with a blockchain explorer, but having a little bit more certainty here and without breaching privacy uh, concerns here. And this is what we build. We, we again, put that uh, live. I think even OKX took over some of our of our um, 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 code, so to say, mm. which is totally fine with us because we want to make sure that the industry works in a, in a, in a very sound way. Um, so and why is that in the DNA of the company? It goes along with the with the with the let's say invention. It's not an invention, but the construction of the wallet. Bitmax, frankly, doesn't want to hold assets of customers. We are not a custodian. We are not an asset manager. We are not doing anything with our clients' funds. We are not rehypothecating. We are not staking. Nothing. We just want to have, and this is this is a dogmatic, really, and not an ideological. This is a dogmatic discussion, uh, uh, especially between spot and derivatives exchanges. And for the derivatives exchanges, it's necessary that we have full control over the margin balances because of that. You win, I lose thing. Mm -hmm. If if you then don't have the access to 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 those funds, you open up positions. You have open exposures, and we don't want that, right? We don't want to speculate with customers' money nor with our own here. Yeah. So, so this is it, but not more than this. So we are happy to either be fully transparent about what's on our balances or what's on our books and what's clients' money or traders' funds and what's house funds, uh, or just help them to, to be capital efficient here. And proof of reserves basically is opening up the books, right? I mean, it's, it's the closest you can get currently to letting everyone have a preview or a short look into your own books, into your own records, into your own ledger. Um, and the moment we could do that without privacy concerns so that people could recalculate the margin balances of other traders and mm. we solved that with, with the leaves and the Merkle trees and, and I mean, not the Merkle tree in itself, but there is a little bit of scrambling going on that our research team did very well. Um, the moment we could do it, we were happy to provide that data. And we even had um, 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 questions out of this. So, hey, we've seen something happened here. And usually 
we answer pretty fast because we have nothing to hide, which again goes back to the to the old founding, uh, let's call it myth of 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 um, of Bitmax here, right? And and this is a little bit like where is it going in in, in the future with custody, um, and and so on. But proof of reserves is a is a medium step, I guess, in the whole industry before we move to something else. Because as long as we have centralized um, holdings of funds for for variation margin and may and, and initial margin um there is something in between that you need to do once that has been solved maybe maybe it's gone then another thing that is of quite interest and i guess that's why nicarta liked our proof of reserves which has nothing to do with the technology of the proof of reserves is that our coverage is pretty high so mm. the the one thing is how often do you prove of reserves second thing is uh, how reliable is your proof of reserves methodology? Third one, how easy is it to apply? So can you can you re, can you do the rerun on your own, or are you relying on a third party saying that this is legit? Mm. And then actually, it's how much of your overall funds does it cover? And here it becomes a little bit difficult, frankly, and it's it's no one's fault. Um, if you are one hundred percent Bitcoin, it's pretty easy mm -hmm. because everything's on chain. If you then go ERC twenty, it still works. If you go to other change, it becomes more and more difficult. The more coins you have, the more non-standard coins you have, the more difficult technologically it, it is to provide a full snapshot. And as we accept basically as um, as collateral, only Bitcoin, uh, Tether, and to a very low extent ETH, um, it's pretty easy for us to achieve a pretty high coverage. I think our coverage is birth 90% of total assets of the firm, whereas other exchanges are sometimes only like 40, 50%, which, which might not be their fault. That doesn't mean that they are doing something funky, mm -hmm. but it means you can't look into it, right? right. And, and because of our design, it's, it's by nature, because of our design, we achieve a high coverage. And I guess all of that then plays together. And that was very helpful during during FTX. I mean, frankly, we have been lucky that we worked on that before, or that the team worked mm -hmm. on this before. And we just needed to pull it out of the drawer and say, okay, let's go live with that. We we can actually prove it, right? It's here. Um that was that was that was actually great. And the the reaction was not nowadays anymore, but around FTX, we felt that we had a lot of inflows of funds. Oh, cool. And funnily, those inflows did not result in higher trading volumes. It was as people tried to park funds from other places where they weren't too sure at that time, um, just to play it safe, to 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 deposit it with us. And and of course, they withdrew later on, and, and there were no problems with that. Uh, but but it, but it was like we we thought, okay, there is inflow. Okay, we will have more trading volume. Oh, wait a moment, they're not trading. They're just. <laughs> <laughs> letting wow. it sitting around early. <laughs> but I, I guess it was it, it was a proof of trust uh, towards bitmax uh, on the custodial side wow yeah that says a lot absolutely and you mentioned uh, about your client client base a little bit earlier saying there's about you know a couple of tens of thousands of customers you know after ftx i saw this in the industry that a lot of shops you know got wiped out from having funds on ftx did you see a reduction in the client base uh that of active traders or did it grow or and how sort of that growth path for bitmax going it is it is it is i i i'd say um again being very honest and open here and and, and, and not just telling stories um a mixed picture mm -hmm. uh we saw one 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 absolutely true trend was um, many of the traders, um, and I'm not talking about the institutions here, really about like like professional individuals, right? And and they trade in many different ways. They trade on our mobile app. They trade on our web front end. But they some some individuals even even run their own trade. I mean, not just bots, but they run via the API and very professionally. So really making money out of it or 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 using this as 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 their day job right mm -hmm. um many of and not many but but a significant amount of them they were hit by ftx because they trade not only on bitmax they right. trade on various exchanges and ftx was i mean one of the biggest ones and especially in the derivative space that was the place to be so they 
well, whether they lose, we will see in the end, but they lost a lot of their funds. Mm -hmm. And with that, they reduced their trading uh, volumes because they had to, they had to basically restart, right? I mean, if, if, if you lose money, you need to make, you, you need to make up for it. And, and first you save on it, you go lower risk uh, and, and you trade less. That's just usual. So we saw that as well. Uh, at the same time, we saw people coming into BitMEX. I mean, not flocking in in the millions, but we have, have seen, especially between December and April, quite a lot of influx of new traders. Oh, cool. Um, not so much with the same level of activity as before. So, so if you look at the ADV they trade, it's a little bit less than this, but still very actively. Then we had a drop over over summer, and and now it's picking up again. Hmm. So, if you look at the pure numbers, um, um, we doubled basically. I mean, from a low level. I mean, Bitmax is not where it was like twenty nineteen or so, uh, but we doubled our market share and our ADV from December to April May. Then we had a dip and now it's recovering again. I mean, but the dip in summer was basically because of low volatility and, and we've seen that across the market. So and, and with a with a stable market share right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Speaking of low, low volatility, uh, you guys used to have uh, up down contracts. Are you guys ever planning to do uh, like vanilla options? This is this is something um, I have to say it's it's not a delicate uh, a topic, but but it's something as you as you place it. We are debating that basically every other week, mm. right? And and it's it's more a matter of how. Not the, I mean, we would love it, and and and, and, and to, to just say it, right? We would love to add it because we see it as a natural fit to our futures and perps business. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, just being cognizant of where the market is, we have one really big uh, options uh, platform on the market and just doing a copycat doesn't do a trick. It doesn't improve the situation of traders because right now, and, and, and the industry is has evolved, right? All the professional traders, they're on all of those venues anyway. So you need to make sure that you either provide a better user experience or a better margining um, um, system. Mm -hmm. Margining is pretty difficult. It's a technical one. Sorry, uh, we are. We are. You, you see, we are a little bit nerds, and even, even the CEO who comes from classical financial services is a little bit nerdy. Not not too much, but <laughs> not so much on the marketing side. More more on the technical side. Um, uh, just just two sentences, and I, I guess you, you you know this. Futures and perps are linear products, so it's very easy to have um, um, this margining margin allocation mm -hmm. between traders. If you now add options, options are non-linear products. So it doesn't mean if I lose a dollar or whatever you have as, as the underlying, I lose a dollar, you win a dollar. It might be I lose a dollar and you win 30 cents. Mm. So how do you account for that? How do you do the margin allocation then so that it basically net net is zero? Because that's what we want to have. We don't want to have exposure on the platform. We don't want to trade right. against our customers. We want to have a peer to peer exchange. And this makes it quite difficult to combine the linear system with a nonlinear system, because if I trade a future and an option, which is a completely cool strategy, I mean, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. um, um, then then how does that work on a peer to peer level and combining the linear with the nonlinear um, um, trades, as long as you just add them up, which would be the easiest example. Frankly, there is no difference to let's let's spell it out there a bit. And, and why should a trader then change? So, so we are basically discussing it every other week. I mean, we hope, frankly, I hope that um, that we can that we can do something in the not too distant future. Actually, we have intensified after FTX uh, uh, um, this this look at what we can do and how we can do it. But I, I unfortunately, I can't guarantee any day yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense for sure. Um, speaking about like liquidations and stuff like that. So obviously, Bitmex can offers up to 100x leverage on some of its contracts, including the Bitcoin contract. So like, can you maybe just touch on the risk system? And is there ever a risk of, you know, uh, a trader goes bankrupt? Uh, I know you guys have an insurance fund. What happens if the insurance fund goes bankrupt? Like maybe t touch on those details? Yes, yes. Um, I hope I don't I don't bore your 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 followers um, because I want to start uh, as, as I see this. Um, I, I want to start a little bit with the basics and then ex explore it because without the basics, um, it's it's sometimes not misunderstood, 
but you can you can interpret it in a in a very different way. So so first of all, let's 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 say there is no insurance fund. What mm-hmm. happens? And we explored that earlier. Uh, we trade. So and we are matched. The two of us are matched in a futures contract. So now price changes. I lose money. You win money. Let's just use this example. Mm-hmm. Um, leverage is not really leverage in terms of a loan, like in classical financial services. In classical financial services, leverage means you have an uncovered position that doesn't work in crypto derivatives, at least not on our platform, because you you, you can't have a a negative balance on your account. That Mm -hmm. just doesn't work. And this is where liquidations come from. So it means, so so let's assume I have a margin of a thousand uh, 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 tether, right? And my margin is used up to a certain extent, meaning that if if the price change goes further against me, uh, I can't cover the position with you. I can't, I mean, it's not that I do it actively, it's the platform, but Mm -hmm. the platform won't be able to allocate my margin to your account later on. So if that happens, this is the maintenance margin requirement, very non-technical. We, we, we have a technical uh, a page on our website, like you, 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 you can go through this, but it's quite technical. But the usual functioning is at the time that there is a risk that if price deteriorates further against me, against my position, and I couldn't pay you your winning side, the engine automatically sends my position to liquidation. That means it sells the rest of my position on the market Mm. to make sure that the money that you would get, you can really get. Mm. This is when I'm being liquidated. I can prevent liquidations in providing more margin, but I need to do that myself. We, We don't do margin calls because in the crypto space, it doesn't work. I mean, we don't have a legal framework, even mm. if you would have a legal framework. I mean, exercising that costs you months and years, but we work on a real time basis. So you need to make sure that you work with a, with a margin balance that's there. And it's for protection of you, mm-hmm. right? So if you're on the winning side, liquidations protect you, right? This is, this is liquidation, very, very easily explained. And it's because of that, because there is no magic actor in the middle. The mm-hmm. exchange doesn't guarantee this. So you're not trading against the exchange or BitMEX, you trade against your peers. And with that, that, that needs to work. So, so now the question is, um, what's the insurance fund? The insurance fund actually was built up by the profits from those liquidations. So the maintenance margin is set in a way that like in a nine, I mean, it's a different metric, but like a 90% of all instances, it's executing early enough to protect your position. So, but that usually goes with a small profit. Actually, often not huge profit, it's very, very minor, but they have been allocated over years since BitMEX inception actually into this insurance fund. And now here is the beauty, what does the insurance fund then do? Let's imagine I was liquidated. You're still on your position, but no one wants to get into that position. So there is no replacement trader entering into the position. So you're, you're here, I'm here, I'm gone, I'm liquidated, but so that your future can, can so, so, so usually you would cancel both contracts, but we wanna make sure that your contract still is valid. So the system tries to find a replacement trader, mm-hmm. let's call it like this. If the system doesn't find a replacement trader and or my liquidation is done at a price below this so-called bankruptcy price. So there is actually a loss out of the liquidation. Mm -hmm. The insurance fund will compensate you for this. So it prevents, it's called auto deleveraging. So if we would be the only ones on the platform, I am canceled, I'm liquidated, your position would automatically be canceled too. But because there are many, many people on the peer to peer exchange, you can have replacement oh, traders, but maybe not at the same at the same price. And the insurance fund shall compensate you as long as possible uh, in this kind of situation. So it's the second layer, it's basically a second level of defense, so to say, but it is fa- f- um, funded out of the previous liquidation proceeds. So in this this leads to heavy debate in the in uh, among traders all the time, because it means in the liquid contracts, where insurance fund was built up, basically this auto deleveraging hardly ever happens because the insurance fund is so big and yeah. and, and, and basically we are still have one of the biggest ones 
Um, I, I think even, I mean, with a small margin, absolute level, the biggest one, but that's, 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 that doesn't count. You need to look at the insurance fund compared to open interest. And there we have a multi, multi, uh, it's multifold, the open interest on BitMEX. So, so it provides you in the high liquidity contracts where it was built up quite with a lot of protection. Whereas on the contrary, if, if you're, if you, if you're dealing or trading in low liquidity contracts, highly speculative that only have been set up like a couple of weeks ago because it's fun, right? So, so there is nothing bad about it. Mm -hmm. Um, it might happen that you go into the contract, but there is no insurance fund that has been built up specifically for that position or where the volatility is high or where exactly this situation that, um, I'm gone. And there is no replacement it happens more of the time and then adl happens more often i mean not 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 regularly frankly i mean you, you can count it on two hands how often we have auto deleveraging and it's always in the low liquidity contracts highly speculative different story in the in the high liquidity contracts we hardly ever have seen auto deleveraging for the at least since i'm here for the last two and a half years because what? of the size of the insurance fund, but this is how it works. So, so it's it's not like there there, there is something that that just pays money out as you go. It's like this working. Like okay, we trade all against each other out of the out of the liquidations. We build up the insurance fund where the insurance fund was built up. We can allocate to prevent auto deleveraging. The only thing that we hardly can prevent, or that where where there is no no real protection against, is liquidation. If you don't look at your at your position. And then with the leverage, and this is the thing, leverage just just accelerates the moment when you might get to liquidation. Because if you, for example, have one times leverage, um, and Bitcoin goes from so every every U.S. dollar in Bitcoin price, if if you trade Bitcoin, every U.S. dollar in Bitcoin price change will give you one dollar of um, margin balance change, be it positive or negative, depending on whether you're short or long. If you have ten times leverage, every change of one dollar in bitcoin price gives you ten dollars in change in your margin if you trade 100 times leverage every us dollar in price change in bitcoin gets you 100 dollar of change in your margin balance so that means if you have a low bar margin balance and trade with high leverage your margin balance if it goes against you might be used up pretty quickly and this is why why liquidations happen yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I just want to touch Sorry. on. No, this <laughs> is good. <laughs> so just to just to touch on just from my understanding on the auto deleveraging perspective, I just yeah. want to repeat it to you and, and make sure I got it right. So let's say yeah. me and you are the only traders on the platform. We have a, a trade going on. At some point, uh, my bet wins so much that it wipes you out. If if there yes. is an insurance fund, essentially now the counterparty to my trade is the insurance fund, essentially, and then once the yeah. Once the insurance fund itself is wiped out, then my position is essentially extinguished at that point. Is that right? That's the auto deleveraging. Conceptually, yes, there right. are a little bit of 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 of, um, of of safety nets in there, so that that we. I mean, because you can exploit the insurance fund even in an illicit way uh, if you know how to do it, and we have some safety nets here. But all other things being equal, that would be it. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, that's a that's a fascinating system. Very cool. Um, so, cu couple. Quick other questions. What do you guys have on the roadmap? So we touched on options. So that's a maybe on the roadmap. Do you guys have any plans to do like US jurisdiction stuff or anything else on the roadmap? I mean, as a US citizen, yeah, have, that would be we, great. We have, we have, I, 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 I hope no one will will will, uh, will then in the end say, hey, Stefan, you, you, you missed those five initiatives or so. So, so uh, it's the easiest. No, we don't look at going into the US. Uh, <laughs> For obvious reasons, I guess. Um, other than that, we 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 extend our space of tradable contracts quite a lot, and we have mm -hmm. done so over the past. Uh, we have done. I mean, I just speak a little bit about the history of the last couple of months, so that you understand where we're going. Then we have cleaned up quite a lot. We have done a lot of infrastructure overhaul, basically being sure that we can trade ten times the the current trading levels or ADVs and 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 trade volumes because we believe that the market will pick up again. Mm -hmm. We have reduced our latency quite a lot. We are, we are even said to be, I mean, whether we are the fastest exchange, I can't tell, but at least in the, in the top three. Um, 
and and we've 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 been um, 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 our, our customers have confirmed that so far. So very on the, on a more professional side, if 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 you do high frequency trading, bot trading, etc., that's that's quite important. So so um, ensuring that we're reliable. So then we have just launched a couple of weeks ago our new guilds feature. What what is that? Actually, it's kind of a I call it a gamification and a new a new way of looking at trading right we have had social trading already we have copy trading out there in the market which is basically i i mean usual stuff i say hey greg you you're a good trader i want to trade exactly the same as you i click the button and i once you do something i get the same executions mm. just with a with a small delay guilds is a little bit different guilds means you can join forces right so you can you can found your let's say own trading desk. So you have a couple of friends and you say, hey, wouldn't it be great? I don't have enough margin to do a complex strategy, right? But if I would have, ha, 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 so you can basically join forces, become one group kind of a trading desk. And you do the long strategy in futures, another one does the short strategy in perps, and the third one adds that with kind of some quanto, quanto exposure. And you can look at the positions jointly. Mm. And you can participate on 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 the whole P and L basically. So and you can you can join your collateral pools, uh, and with that um, your ADV will count up jointly to get into other fee tiers. So especially oh, if you cool. want to go and say you want to get into the space where you get maker rebates right on the platform, this is really something where each and every individual might not reach the the ADV is necessary to go into that fee tier. But if you are three, four, five, six, you might. Mm. So you have a benefit out of that. You have your own little space, your own troll box, right? I mean, I guess you know the troll box on, on, on BitMEX where mm. everyone's chatting and you have your own private one for your guild. So basically it's like if I don't know whether you're in gaming, but if, if you do if you if you do uh, 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 um, multiplayer role playing games mm. online. I mean, all the people sit there with 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 their with their headphones and their micros, and and they're playing like together. I mean, they just join forces and they're they're a team, right? And now you can do that in trading. So it's not so much that it's really a new product where you have a new exposure, but you can look at trading in a different way. You mm. can interact in a different way. You have a little bit more fun, and you can get lots of benefits out of that. Um, and and we 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 built that out now with. It's called Guilds 2.0. It's if you're really in there, and it it really took up. I mean that that was the amazing thing. We thought of it as an engagement tool and saying, hey, let's 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 get something out that is exciting. But frankly, we didn't expect that this will will be so successful. So I think nowadays it's it's like more than 10 percent of all trading volumes comes from Guilds. Oh no way! That's so cool. That's new volume. People joining the platform, especially to experience it, and so far they seem to be pretty happy. <laughs> so we 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 like this. What we want to do as well is is uh, looking at enabling um, those individuals um, to bridge um, 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 uh, margin shortages. Right? I mean, it's not that we want to go into lending, but sometimes you have that that with a very that you can protect your exposure and your trading position and your P&L with very low um, um, levels of, of capital. And we want to help people to do that. So that's something that's on the on the mm. plate, basically. And there, there is not a, not a real good name for it right now uh, because it's very technical again. Um, but we want to go live with that probably in September and September. This is something so so those and, and, and then it's about providing a better user experience. So this is not really a product or a launch uh, uh, that you really can see, but we improve our, especially web front end step-by-step. -step. It's We call it BitMEX Pro. I mean, we are already kind of a trading terminal. And if you look at it, it's, it's, it's more like a Bloomberg terminal and others have copied that. So, so, but we, for example, I don't know whether you saw it, but we added now a newsfeed integration into mm. our web front end. Um, we implemented others had that already, but we implemented even a better one like chart trading, and we are we are improving that step by step to cater for the need of of this this high volume traders, right? That sit in front of the screen like a couple of hours a day and say, no, no, I I, I don't want to 
go from here to there. So I don't want to go from here to there. I don't want to change it here. I want to have everything on one screen. Um, and I want to not switch to, 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 to look for news. I don't want to switch to a new platform. If mm -hmm. I want to have my calculation for my strategies, I don't want to go to uh, open a new tab in my Google Sheets or so. I want to do it on the platform. So we work on digitization. So actually that you can even um, 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 configure your web front and uh, much more than you already can today. You can do more than most people know. That's the funny thing. I noticed that people sometimes complain about, yeah, I don't like the looks and feels here. And if they talk to me, I say, yeah, but you can go here. You set those three clicks and then oh, nice. you change them. Didn't know that, yeah. right? And we need to work on that as well so that it's more understandable in an intuitive way. Mm -hmm. This is something that, 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 that comes, that, that, that will come as well. I think it's 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 uh, we we're back to incremental changes, right? We're not looking for the big, big, big thing. Um, I mean, options is one, uh, whereas I, I can't commit to it to a day yet. Uh, the others are really how we look at things, improve the user experience, make sure that those um, high highly active traders like being on the platform. That's that's really for us the holy grail because that's where we came from. Bitmax was founded by traders yeah, I mean, and they love trading and they were, I mean, frankly, it's take away what FTX did with it. They did the same. Um, and, and, and they said, what we want to have, we have nowhere else. So we need to build it. Right. If it would have been somewhere else, Bitmax never would have been founded even in FTX, but I mean, they did something else out of it, but different story. So we, we try to stay true to that. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. And on the subject of guilds, that's kind of like a, a new thing I've, I've never really thought about. But I know in my own experience, like trading on a pr prop desk in Chicago, one of the best things is that you're surrounded by other really good traders. And that's really how, you know, you can gain a lot of experience quickly and learn from other people's successes and mistakes. So that's a that's a really interesting concept. Uh, so last question on BitMEX and then we'll jump into some personal stuff. So BitMEX yeah. has a token, the BMEX token. Maybe you could just talk yes. about that real quick and, and sort of what is the thinking behind there and the tokenomics? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a detailed one. Um, one thing to, for me, understand is, um, or, or what I always try to make sure that people understand is that the BMEX token really is for our traders in the ecosystem mm -hmm. to provide utility. It's not a funding token. We don't earn anything out of that. Um, we don't sell it, right? There is no, none, we, we haven't sold it to, to anyone. It's basically an engagement and utility token. So usual burning mechanism, the higher the volume on the platform is, the higher the burn mechanism is, so that provides value to everyone. Second one, but it's much more interesting. If you hold BMAX and you stake it with us, you are eligible to unlock a lot of benefits in terms of trading fees. So you can you can you can go up the chain basically, even as an individual to go to the to the maker rebates, right? And the lowest fee tiers. Mm -hmm. So so to give you an example, if you stake like um, uh, it depends like fifty thousand or a hundred thousand BMAX, um, you get into the into the top tier into the top fee tiers, basically, where you start getting maker rebates. That means you can trade different strategies. Hmm. And that's that's the unlocking thing, right? I mean, if, if, if I'm Stefan, I trade on the platform, I have mediocre ADVs because I have a day job and I'm not just a trader, but let's say I have a couple of, of 100,000 US dollars in ADV, so I'm trading every day. Um, but with that, I would never come into the fee tier where I get a make a rebate. That means if I post a, an order and I'm executed, I actually don't pay fees, I get fees, right? Mm -hmm. This is a make a rebate. Um, I never get to that. With BMAX, I buy a couple of thousand BMAX, I stake it with a platform. All of a sudden, I can, I can do completely different um, 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 trading strategies. Especially for our professional guys, that's really something they aspire. Right, it's it's not just a fee rebate. It's even more than this. It's 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 a it's a rebate on the price of a crypto coin, if you if you think about it, right? And this this is what it gets. It unlocks uh, several benefits. For example, um, we are a strategic partner of AC Milan, and there's always uh, there are benefits we get there, and we give that to our top traders, right? We 
we we um, um, value and we appreciate our top traders with VMAX token. So so if you're in trading competitions and you win, you usually get VMAX token. You can sell them, right? You can use them for the for the benefits there. Um, you can stake them. You can earn interest on on the VMAX token. So it's 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 like this ecosystem token. Um, but we definitely and this is why. And my 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 BMAX, uh, uh, prime minister will kill me for that. It's not so speculative than other tokens we've seen because we definitely, especially after the FTX experience, we didn't want to use this to get into conflicts of interest with our traders, mm. right? So it's a little bit more boring than others. But it's more stable and it provides real value. So you don't need to wait for your value to come. You don't need to wait for a pump and dump scheme to come to get the value. You get the value outright on the platform. Yeah, that's cool. That, that, that seems like really interesting. <laughs> if, I, if I'm a market maker on BitMEX, like I can yes. own some BMAX tokens, saves me a lot of fees, so it starts to pay for the Absolutely. position. And then, yes. as, and, and it, just to make sure I got this right, a portion of the fees of BitMEX itself goes towards the to token burn. Is that right? So if, yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So if more people trade on BitMEX, uh, there'll be exactly. more token burn, and and so exactly. That's that's exactly. really interesting. Cool. That's a that's like a it's a nice way to do a, sort of a, a bet of confidence in, in BitMEX. Yes. Um, yes. Cool. So just closing up here, I always like to ask a few personal questions. So the first one would be, uh, you know, if you have any favorite books usually I do trading books but if even if it's a non trading book that's cool too and then what do you like to do for fun outside of being CEO of BitMEX yeah uh, okay start with the last one um, you look at me I'm a little bit older so so I'm 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 I'm, I'm off the the extreme sports trips <laughs> I've got family I love really I love spending the the spare time with my family going on trips traveling um, I do a lot of sports actually to compensate. So I do, I mean, I go to the gym, which isn't something very special. A slightly special thing is I do a lot of ballroom and Latin dancing together with my cool. wife, even going for dancing competitions. That's awesome. And it has quite of a funny, um, I just noticed that uh, recently it has a lot to do with my job because it's about um, team Okay, only two, but team coordination and persistence. You need to train quite a lot to get some moves really going before they look okay-ish. Not very well, but okay-ish or very good, but okay-ish. So, so, but we we enjoy this. So, because you really go off. I mean, if you go, I just can't. I mean, don't want to. It's 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 not at here. But if someone tries uh, Latin and ballroom dancing for a while, not just the first course or so, you really switch off your mind. It's like meditation because you're not able to think about something else if you're dancing. The yes. coordination takes so much of your mental space. You can't think about work. In those three hours you train, you're there. And this is this is just great stuff. It's like meditation <laughs> with with sports attached to it. So doing 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 this basically and, and frankly, um I'm more on, on your on your on your um reading stuff. Um, if it's not job, um, I, my hidden personal interests, uh, even some of my friends don't know that well, are around philosophy, social tensions, and economic organization of societies. Mm -hmm. And that reflects itself. So frankly, on, 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 on job-related stuff, I'm more on the movie side. Um, I, I read a lot of books. I mean, I don't want to bore you with Flash Boys and stuff, the usual stuff for, for mid-40s uh, financial guys. But... A movie, it's a B movie actually, but I really love in a way, is Boiler Room. Yeah. I, I recommend that because it's it's so much, sometimes even crypto, and and it was a starting point for a lot of movie stars we know today. But at that time, it was just some of their of their of their um, project they needed to do to earn some money. That's so funny that that B movie feeling, and then with with what they do. But frankly, my latest books I, I run is more non-business, and it ranges from, um, yeah, psychology. So I, I just recently read a book like it's called Fear and Power: Techniques of Domination in the Generate and the Generation of Fear in Capitalist Democracies, which is quite technical. <laughs> it's but a it's, mouthful. It's, it's <laughs> um, and then more for for relaxation. 
I'm a guy, I love Haruki Murakami, all of his works basically, hmm. uh, and then down to science fiction. And I'm a big fan of, uh, unfortunately, already deceased Ian M. Banks. I don't know whether you know this. No. It's the culture novels. It's fantastic. I mean, I recommend that even to crypto guys because a lot of, um, I wouldn't say ideas. He didn't explore crypto ideas or DLT ideas, not at all. That wasn't the time. But the ideological thinking behind it is, 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 very much exposed there in an indirect basis it's not telling you what to think but it's 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 basically so so ian m banks um designs a future where humanity is split into two parts one part is um against ai against mm. uh, artificial consciousness and stuff this is his first book basically and then he explores different ways and the other part is called the culture which is a huge large human society that is run actually by ais and it's wow. about the conflict between those and, and what it does with humans and how they develop and it's it's not it's not a dystopy not at all it's very balanced frankly and it's about how much um privacy is necessary what's the what's the um um, not authority. What's the um, responsibility of every of, of of everyone? How to take care of your own life? I mean, I mean, again, it's not an educate. It's not educational books, but it's very, very, very nicely written. Uh, um, sometimes difficult to read for non English speaking persons. I remember that when I first read it in English, I was like, "What's this?" Mm -hmm. And after the third book, I was a complete fan. I, I have I have all of his books. <laughs> Whoa, that's fascinating. Yeah, that sounds like a something to think about especially now nowadays so that's really fascinating yeah, yeah, yeah no no really it's 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 amazing that that i mean sorry you see i'm a fan that that that, that ian banks is not known that much mm. i mean if, if you see like like um herbert so 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 with with dune or or you see isaac asimov everyone knows them everyone read them and even if you, if you look at snow piercer or snow crash and all of that stuff and 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 a neuromancer right everyone knows this hmm. but frankly ian banks plays in that space as well completely and he he he's he's got a complete series of books uh, uh um, designing a whole universe basically and you can read it a space opera or you can read it under philosophical uh terms or just for the technology and all the 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 things he had in mind um Pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, but so, sorry, I'm fan. I'm no, fan. that's really interesting. That's a great <laughs> recommendation. Well, Stefan, thank you so much. This was really interesting. Great breakdown of everything going on on BitMEX. Love the book recommendations. Um, so thank you for coming on. Okay, cool. Hey, speak to you soon. Thanks a lot for having me. Bye. Thank you. Bye.